Let's uh, bring in Jamie Thomas now, because time's limited for an NHL broadcaster. We know that from 680, 680 CJOB. How you doing, JT? I'm so busy that I had to I had to take some time to find the best internet in the house, which is in my daughter's bedroom. So that's why you have this beautiful decor behind me. So. Well, thanks That's for sitting through the break, and yeah, yeah, I appreciate all of that. Let me. Last time you were with us was from Bell MTS. What's the name of the practice Iceplex. facility there? What is it? Iceplex. The Iceplex, right? That was the last time. So it's been far too long. A lot's happened since then, Jamie. And let's Ooh. talk some uh, Winnipeg Jets hockey. Let me start here. Who's the best team in Canada? Because the Leafs beat the Oilers. The Oilers beat the Jets. The Jets beat the Leafs. I said it's like a cat chasing its tail here. What's the answer to that question? <clears throat> well, I think. It's, it varies day to day to sit on the fence in this answer. But if I look at the Jets roster, I will say they have the deepest forward group in this division, uh, in this country. So I think I give them the heads up. I also give them the nod because they have the best goaltender in the division too as well. And a guy, a, a group of six or seven defensemen that are kind of like the no-name group in the National Hockey League right now and specifically in the North Division. But I would say the Jets are, to me, and I see them all the time, and I've seen every other team 800 times like you guys have, um, I would say the Jets are the best team in this country right now. So when you were talking amongst your NHL media peeps, mm -hmm. Rich, like Rich Sutter was just with us an hour ago here in the bunker, and he said it's not as important to finish first. How do you yeah. guys feel about the race to finish first in the Scotia North Division and its importance? I, I think it's like something you can hang on your mantelpiece that you were the first place team in this division. But without fans, Rod, I, I just don't really see – an advantage for anybody outside you get to sleep in your bed one extra night if you play seven games so i don't think they're going out of their way and i'm speaking of the jets to go finish first in the division i don't think it's a lockdown thing i don't think we we have to have home ice in this series to be successful the only place where it gives you an advantage if you're the winnipeg jets when you play the edmonton oilers and you get that last change against Connor mcdavid and leon dreisaitl when they load up that top line which dave Tippett did the other night so I think you get an advantage there, but overall the Jets have been phenomenal on the road because they played 17 of 22 there. They're quite familiar with it. They, they've uh, kind of made a, a living out of playing well away from home. So I, I'm comfortable, and I think the Jets are very comfortable wherever they start the Stanley Cup playoffs when they begin. Nice. From some of our viewers, Wayne Jones watching in Winnipeg. He is watching on YouTube. He says, grabbing the North Division banner would be special. For mm -hmm. sure, but if you toe pick it in round two, one, two, or three, it's not going to be as special. You understand that. Yeah. Uh, Jeff Jeff Cabellis in Winnipeg. JT and Edmonds are the best. I listen to you guys a lot. <laughs> I think you're very good. You're getting along Thanks. well. From Deragon, I hope I'm saying it right, Deragon on YouTube. Love the hockey and football talk. Let me ask you this, Jamie. It's your first time okay. in the show, and I'm listening a lot on yeah. NHL radio, man. It's too bad you're not traveling, right? But... How has it been oh. for you? It's like what it's fan, the difference between calling the game at home and then calling a game off a monitor. Rod, you know this as well as anybody. You've done it before. There's a massive difference. There's such a huge advantage when you see things when you're standing over top of it rather than a monitor and allowing the television to, you know, the screen cuts off sometimes. Every every rink has their little wrinkles in terms of the broadcast of how they work the cameras. Sports and TSN do things differently. So I, I, I love calling games in the building. I can't wait till you can call them with, with people in them. But uh, I feel very fortunate. There's not many jobs uh, of this in the National Hockey League. There's 31 of them. There's going to be 32 real soon. So I feel blessed to have that opportunity. But it's been great. But, man, I would love to be on the road. Like, traveling is kind of a nice break sometimes to see other people in our business. That's, that's one of the parts that I love about uh, being in the media is talking to everybody in every other city and, um, so I, I miss that part of it. I miss a lot of my friends, but this is this has been. I'm glad we're playing hockey. That's the first and foremost. I'm glad for the most part the Jets have been healthy, and I think outside of the run in in Vancouver, uh, the Canadian hockey teams have done a fantastic job fighting COVID. It's been the safest place, there's no doubt. And of course, come mm -hmm. next year, hopefully next year, uh, it all gets back to normal. So let me ask you this: where the Jets are at? I think you mm -hmm. had them predicted to be pretty pretty high in this Scotia North Division, but it's literally like, you know you're going to be in the playoffs. The question is now, how far are you going to go? And I just get this sense mm -hmm. in Winnipeg that the fans are just like bubbling. It's a good, it's a good bubbling. Yeah. They're not Paul Maurice bub sure. wanting him fired bubbling. They're like, no. we could win the Stanley Cup here. Have I sensed mm -hmm. that right? I, I, yeah, that, that makes sense totally, Rod. And, and I, I could see why Jets fans are getting excited. 
you know, you have these little hiccups every once in a while, you know, you lose to Edmonton three, nothing, but that was following a five game road trip. It was a lot, you know, that's that classic, I don't want to say trap game, but whenever you come home from a long road trip, the legs aren't really there. They only, they had the day off beforehand, but they're so deep up front. Um, you know, they add Jordy Ben at the deadline. So now you have seven, eight defensemen that you can piece in in your lineup um, in the playoffs. Should you run into injuries? That's the bonus part. And again, I, I mean, I sound like a broken record, but Hunter Hellebuck has been so good. You know, there's a little stretch there. Where you're kind of concerned. You had eight games where he let, allowed three goals or more, but then all of a sudden he locks it down. He's been stupendous for the last 10 games. And I think he's pulled himself back in the conversation for the Vezina Trophy, which is clearly Andre Vasilevsky's to lose at this point, the way he's been playing. But they're they're comfortable on the road. They're they're good at home. They match up very well against any team that's going to go up against them in the North Division. It's just such an unknown outside because I don't know about you guys. I've watched nothing but Scotia NHL North Division hockey this year. I may have slipped out a couple of times for the outdoor games, <laughs> but man, I, I just been so focused on this. But I know Colorado will be a handful wherever they slide in. Vegas is going to be tough. Like the East is not easy at all. But I, I I think the Jets with their depth up front. It's the first time in, since 2017 18 they've had a fourth line that Paul Maurice can rely on. And because of the schedule that they've had, he's been able to roll four lines, and that's why everybody's fresh. Mark Scheifele's not playing 25 minutes a night. Josh Morris he's not playing 25 26 minutes a night. So it's a pretty rested group. Um, they've had the benefit of this. You know they don't play till Thursday, so they get another break here in the schedule. So I think they're healthy touching wood as anybody in the league right now. And I think they can go up against anybody, uh, anybody at any time. I'm absorbing everything you just said. Number one, great use of the word stupendous. Two, <laughs> yes, thanks. we had Ryan Leslie on, who's the host of Flames uh, television, which what you used to do. And it's the same thing. He's like, I can't tell you what the Ducks are going to do or what Getzlav's going to do. I'm not even paying attention to that. And the thing is, yeah. I get it. You're so ensconced in your own world of what you do. Now, Producer, there's not much room for anything else. That's why I'm enjoying all the stuff I'm doing in life now, <laughs> from auto yeah. racing to you get a variety. To rock. You get oh. variety every day. I, uh, we're I'm Scotia NHL North every day. Like the, oh, I know. I'm so I'm trained now to say Scotia NHL North. I don't even know how to say North Division anymore. That's how much we're we're buying into the product. <laughs> so so, couple Clark's got some questions. I'll fire those at you. But our poll question today for Capital yeah. Ford. And Universal Collision, Capital Ford, located right across from Polo Park Mall. Who's the most underrated player in the National Hockey League? The options are Nick Ehlers, Alex Barkov, Bo Horvat, and Sebastian Aho. And Ehlers mm -hmm. is leading by a nose over the Panthers' Alex Barkov. You see Ehlers all the time. Tell me about this guy. And is he ever going to be regarded as the NHL superstar that he probably is and should be? Um, I, a long playoff run will change that rod. I think, you know, that just remember how Mark Shifley came out in 2017, 18 people yeah. in Canada knew how good Mark Shifley was, but then he has that stupendous run, especially that series against Nashville in the second round. And people start to know who Mark Shifley is. You need a long playoff run for players to get their due. Unfortunately, Nikolai Ehlers is so, un, so, so fast. And there's been a big change to his game because Paul Maurice takes his young players and puts them on the top line with Blake Wheeler and Mark Shifley to teach them how to play the defensive side of things because the Shifley line goes up against the other team's best lines traditionally every night. So you can't help but learn through osmosis. Plus, Blake Wheeler is such a good leader, what he does on and off the ice. So you learn from that. But Ehlers has really benefited from the trade of Patrick Laine because he's no longer looking to tr pass to Patrick Laine. So now Ehlers has that shoot first mentality that he had in junior hockey, and the Jets are benefiting from it. So is Nikolai Ehlers. He's a little bit older. Uh, you know, you, you know how to take care of your body a little bit better. You know how to train a lot better. So he's he's just really coming into his own. And I hope outside of this division, outside of this country, people start to appreciate just how good he is because he's he's pretty special. And it's a great contract the Jets have him signed to right now. And this is a guy that's going to score thirty goals in the NHL for a very long time. Forty nine and thirty seven in Halifax of the Q for Nikolai Ehlers, which you probably know. Um, James in Border Manitoba watching says Winnipeg is blessed with great hockey announcers, starting with Kurt Kielbeck. And I gotta say this, Jamie. I walked by the Kurt Winnipeg Ice I walked by the Winnipeg Ice booth the other night in the dub hub and I'm like, Oh, Mitch Peacock's for good. I forgot how good Mitch is. And as you know, he's calling yeah. ice games on 1290. So, yeah, what, Winnipeg knows their hockey. I'm calling. Munzee and I have this deal. Winnipeg's Canada's mm -hmm. hockey capital. 
Saskatchewan is Canada's football capital. Called it a draw. He was okay with right. that. You're good? That's fair. Okay. Yeah, I'm good with that. that. That's fair. From producer Clark, what's the latest on Blake Wheeler? Okay, so Wheeler was cleared the other day um, before the game against the Edmonton Oilers, but because the Jets had these four days off between games, they thought it would be better just to give him the extra four days. And because the day he was cleared, it was just the morning skate. So Paul Maurice traditionally only puts guys in if they've had a practice or two before he puts in the lineup, no matter who they are. Um, so Wheeler is good to go. He's he's cleared to to play. So he will play Thursday against the Toronto Maple Leafs, and that's going to cause some movement in the Winnipeg Jet forward groups. You know, that's kind of all I got for Jets questions, and I know that's what you're used to answering, but can I just throw a CFL one at you? I think people will forget that you were at TSN 1150 Hamilton. You got a lot of great friends there, a lot of people affected Mm -hmm. by it going off the air. What was that experience like, just for a CFL wrinkle at you, uh, in Ticat's town, Tabby's town, Steel town? Yeah. What was that like? Well, you, I remember phoning you when I got the job and, and talking about what Hamilton was like and, and what a what a great football city, right? It's you know, there Hamilton is so underrated when it comes to the whole GTA because Toronto overrides everybody and clearly it's the best, you know, CFL market in Ontario. In my opinion, I know Ottawa might have a say in that as well, but Hamilton is so fantastic. But what an experience it was to do pre and post game shows you you when you cover the cfl like i did with sportsnet you're not really ingrained in it because you're doing so much hockey but i really got to know a lot of the general manager assistant general manager sean burke is a fantastic individual taught me a lot you know like there's it was it was a great experience for me i wish it could have lasted a little bit longer but where i am right now is where i'm supposed to be but it, it was covering the cfl every day was was it was was a pleasure and I, I miss going to the Grey Cup. That's another thing that uh, was one of my favorite things to do every year in November, no matter how cold it was, wherever we were. Again, getting to gather with friends and talking about football was uh, was was one of the great parts of the job. Oh, for sure. Well, Jim Hobson, and you would know him, the Hall of Fame former yeah. Rough Rider president, said to me many years ago, he said, life has a funny way of getting you where you need to go. And in your yeah. case, boom. <laughs> I don't think you're complaining. Yeah. But I, I'll just say yeah. this. You did either text me or DM me one day saying, I got Ken Austin coming on today. How do I interview him? What should I ask him? And I was literally like, <laughs> where do I go? With him? It's like, it's like, not an easy guy. Jump on it. Jump I know. On the not an easy guy to interview, Jamie. No, no. But you know what? Outside of, he, he reminds me a lot of Daryl Sutter because you talk to Daryl Sutter outside of hockey or outside of being a member of the media. Best guy ever. So it's just, it's, it's incredible the difference between the two and it's business and then friendship, you know, Daryl Sutter puts an arm around you and gives you, might give you a little bit of a headlock. And, but then when the media, when the microphones are in front of him, I'm like, is this the same guy I just talked to about five seconds ago? So it's, Ken Austin is very similar, very similar to that exact same person. I remember Brent Sutter one time, all business. And when I was covering the Lethbridge Hurricanes, I finished doing a one-on-one with him. He slapped me on the butt. He's like, good job. And I'm like, what just what, what, what happened? <laughs> we, well, I told you we just had Rich in an hour ago, and he's probably yeah. the most affable of the Sutters. I would, well, yes, he would agreed. certainly tell you. Yeah, Ronnie's up yeah. there. But I did a banquet in Paradise Hill, Sask with Daryl l- about 16 months ago before the pandemic, and I just threw stuff back at Daryl. Yeah, he didn't really like that either. Like on the on the mic in front of the, you know what I mean? He was just sort of like, yeah. Yeah. How dare you oh. question me? Yeah. Oh, well, whatever like, it is. Rod, like one time in Vancouver, I was covering the World Juniors, and I was got, you know how the, the assignment desk sends you with the murder question from the news department, and you got to ask those questions, and you're the face of this question? I remember asking about the, the hospital, like where the people are, the kids are staying, and what the parents are like. And I remember Brent just looking at me, and they looked over the PR guy. And then, you know, the laugh from the rest of the media in the room. I'm like, you just got thrown to the wolves in front of all your peers. Oh, and yeah. Brent Sutter's giving you the death glare. And I'm like, I'm never going to live this down in that one. So I, I know the I know the Sutter glare. That's the look. That's exact. And everybody is going in the back of the room. <laughs> all right. Jamie, like I said, we're listening. Go Jets. Thanks. And I appreciate the time as always, my friend. 
Yeah, great job with the Western Hockey League this year, guys. I'm glad it's going, and uh, at least the, the players are getting the opportunity to prove what they have uh, before the NHL draft. That's fantastic news. Yeah, thanks, JT. It's been a dream. Appreciate it. Have a good day. Jamie Thomas from 680 CJOB, Manitoba's information superstation. And you're home of the Winnipeg Jets and Winnipeg Blue Bombers. You're watching Rod Peterson On Demand. For more of the Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media.